Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. With that, we move on to the fireside chat titled Towards Revolutionizing the Wealth Management Ecosystem. And it's an honor and privilege to first welcome and introduce the members of this fireside chat. Vimal Venkatram, Managing Director, India at Snowflake, and Varun Sridhar, Chief Executive Officer, Paytm Money. Welcome. And this session will be moderated by Ajay Srinivasan, Director, Crystal Research. Ajay, over to you. Thanks to ET and uh, good morning to all members of the audience and my fellow panelists as well. Uh, COVID has truly transformed the financial services landscape in India. In the capital market space, for example, investors not only from the bigger cities, but also from smaller tier two markets have started investing, capitalizing on the ease of access, account opening, and the process of investing itself. Not only that, uh, we observe that the new generation investors are also keen to learn professionally and invest in line with their risk appetite. This has spawned new business opportunities for players across the board, whether it is existing companies, whether it is new entities attempting to cater to newer segments and disrupting the status quo, or technology service providers who enable the provision of seamless services to customers in an efficient manner. Advancement in technology and usage of advanced AI, ML, and analytics models has also improved the ability of firms to draw insights based on data and also offer customized advisory services and products to their clients. All this coupled with tight regulations around data access, data sharing, and need for real-time data access has increased the complexities that companies need to manage and at the same time protect their reputation and also keep costs in check. Uh, so we have a lot of areas to actually cover in the next 20 minutes or so. I welcome uh, Vimal and Varun to this discussion. Uh, maybe I will start off with uh, Varun. Uh, Varun, Paytm has uh, uh, emerged as one of India's leading wealth management portals, uh, whether it's for mutual funds, stocks, IPO offerings, digital gold, uh, F&O trades, ETFs, in a very short span of four years. Uh, we have also seen competitive intensity multiply manifold during this period. What would you say are some of your key learnings over this time span? Um, Ajay and Vimal, you know, first of all, uh, hello and uh, good, good to see you guys. And, uh, you know, thank you for inviting me. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll try and put it in a summary way. I think last two years, super exciting. But really, if you look at 2020 to 2030, I think for the wealth tech space, it's maybe the single most important decade that India is going through. Like, I think there are times when, you know, uh, the tsunami happens and all of India changes. Uh, and I think for a country of a billion point two, what's going to happen in the next 10 years, it's already started is this phenomenal transformation in the wealth tech space. So what's exactly happening? I think there are three or four key trends, right? Uh, and on Paytm money, uh, maybe I just a quick correction. We launched mutual funds about three years back and we did um, FNO about 12 months back, right? Uh, so it's, we are very, very young to this, uh, but still we have broker number 14 and maybe top five players in your, you know, and that success uh, has to do with my first trend, which is accessibility, right? So today, for example, we went ahead on mutual funds and we said, hey, users should get into direct mutual funds. Like why should you pay a bank or an IFA a distribution commission for 20 years of your life, right? And when we did that, the important thing was to put it in technology so that our costs go down. Today, I have one customer in 99% of all PIN codes in India, right? Doing a direct mutual fund. Uh, we bought the entry limit down on SIP from you know thousands of rupees to 100 rupees. Uh, those things are possible only when you are technology mobile first, right? And you know that's what we are. 80% of my R&D costs, my total cost of the company is in engineering and product, right? We don't have physical distribution. Uh, we're trying a very small experiment in Ahmedabad with a very, very few number of people, right? But other than that, no other things. I think first trend is accessibility driven by engineering, right? Driven by technology. Uh, second big trend, I think, is the growth of the DIY customer. Earlier, you could tell the customer, please invest in this. Now, I think that's changed. The customer has become super savvy. And I'll give you a great example. If you look at the growth of futures and options, and we, you know, we have broken number 14 in India today uh, in 12 months of launch. And what it makes me understand is a consumer exactly knows his risk appetite. Like he's able to say, this is my risk capital with a plus minus 20. This is my risk capital with a plus minus five. This is my risk capital, which I can't lose. 
which technically you would go to a CFA and call it asset allocation strategy. You know, that strategy India has understood and it's phenomenal to see that, right? And give you a great outcome of that. ETFs in India, uh, you know, in America, it's about 35% of AUM in India, retail, maybe 0.3%. Uh, at Paytm Money, we started educating users last year. And today about 30% of all my customers have at least one ETF, right? Uh, and, and that's phenomenal, right? So the next 10 years then belongs to new product categories driven by consumer. Why should I even do a direct mutual fund when ETF is better, cheaper, faster, more liquid, right? And I think the last trend, Ajay, is uh, the growth of what I would call h and uh, advanced traders, algo traders, all the maths, data sciences, high-end technology coming in. But yeah, you know, in, in a nutshell, next 10 years or 2020 to 2030, single most important decade in our lives, uh, at least in mine, I'm sure. And, you know, we're very happy to be part of that and writing that story. Uh, if I may just ask a follow-up question, Varun. Yes, please. Uh, uh, obviously, Paytm's business is underpinned by technology uh, and, uh, and technology is going to play a very huge role in how this industry gets transformed and in a way more uh, democratized as well. Uh, how do you think will the wealth tech space evolve if I take the same time frame you mentioned? Um, I think there are, on the technology side, maybe two important words, right? First is stability. Simply put, it works, right? You know, it, and you, everybody might say, you know, and I can see women laughing, you're like, Varun, you know, it works. That's not innovation, right? That's boring. But the hard truth is that millions of orders per second, this whole ecosystem needs to work. And it's not true. We all know it's not true. Today, you know, exchanges go down, brokers go down. But, you know, at Paytm, we always ask ourselves, the wallet works 100% of times. You're never down. So if you're never down on one business, how can we transform that technology expertise? And that's not easy. It's easy to get to 90% uptime. It's very difficult to get to 99.9. .9. It's even more difficult to get to 99.9999 at scale, right? And I'll give you a great example. Uh, aftermarket orders are something India doesn't understand. So most people trade between 915 to 330. But actually, most people are very busy other than capital market people, right? You all have normal lives. Like, I don't imagine, Ajay, at 9.15, you'll be doing something else, right? So normal people, when do they get time? Evenings or weekends. So they could program the orders and they could say, ah, when the market opens, let the computer do the job or I'll go traders. To give you a sense, at 9.15.01, so many orders get pumped into the system and many technology platforms are not able to take it. So I think just stability is part A. Part B, I think, is transparency and cost. Technology needs to solve something. Technology for the sake of technology is not worth anything. So it needs to solve cost reduction, right? So for example, uh, we've bought down futures and options trading prices in India. Like most of my competitors are at 20 rupees a trade. I do at 10. Now the reason I'm able to do at 10 is all my cost is in tech and my technology does the job, right? So how you build your product, how you automate every single thing is what makes the difference. That's not easy, right? Uh, that's not easy across millions of customers all the way from a rickshawala who wants to do something very small to an advanced algo trader who's doing 500 orders and 100 crores of business in a day. Let's just imagine the tech complexity behind, but I think innovation in my mind is gonna be simple. It's gonna be that it works. And second, it has to bring cost downs. It has to get nimble. Sure. Uh, Vimal, coming to the technology uh, aspect, uh, what are some of the key trends which you are witnessing across the financial services landscape? Well, first up, you know, thank you, Varun, and thank you, Ajay, for having me on this panel. Varun, fantastic insights from, from your perspective. Uh, I learned a lot, and yeah, you're absolutely right. This is the defining decade. You know, this is what is going to transform many businesses, not just from a banking or fintech standpoint, but across so many other lines of businesses as well. Now, when you talk about, you know, financial services and what are the key trends that we're looking at, it's undergoing, as Varun was mentioning, significant transformation. And I think it's overall dif dri driven by three macro trends, right? One, we're talking about the modernization of the technology stack. Varun made excellent points that today, the amount of money and the investments that you do in technology is going to really be the game changer for the future, at least from a, a decade standpoint. The second, we're talking about how do you now value create you know, through data optimization. And the final thing is absolutely focusing on the customer experience. So let's talk a little bit right from a tech, technology transformation standpoint. I think today, financial services institutions have traditionally been very slow to adopt new technologies in a lot of the banks and everyone have you know on-premise data servers legacy applications potentially non-digital workflow requirements but today digital is becoming the new standard the customer expectations of their financial services providers 
and it's driven all of that by you know their use of technologies through companies like let's say amazon or facebook financial services incumbents they have to modernize their stack in order to a digitalize second automate their workflows if you're looking at for example how do you optimize and create a fantastic user experience for client onboarding what can you do for automating your processes how can you do better transaction settlements how can i have better personalization of my customers and of course from a portfolio management standpoint then you look at things like you know data optimization how do you now adopt a, a multi cloud strategy and build cloud collaborative capabilities for example how do you invest in data science how do you invest in ai or machine learning initiatives and ultimately businesses today realize data is that fuel which powers business critical workflows and this is across banks and multiple other fintechs and things like that and what you're really looking at is integrating the data across multiple different systems multiple different applications let's say crm analytics engines or even proprietary applications all with a consistent data model and here in lies that value right that of that data you cannot differentiate through predictive data analytics you can do uh, you know a lot of regulatory report, reporting requirements that really give the real time reports to re regulators how do you now ensure data governance for example and finally it's all about the customer how can i you know enable a customer 360 degree view using analytics where you can do for example next best actions how can i have better personalization like i said or from a insurance standpoint how can i really look at real time pricing for example and finally like i said from a customer experience standpoint with all of this proliferation of technology and access to the digital tools financial services institutions today are looking to streamline how their employees are realizing business objectives and how their customers are also finding value with their products and services and this definitely requires all these financial services companies to extend access and collaboration across their teams create new channels of distribution and potentially leverage data and analytics to drive that personalization uh you made a very interesting point uh, uh vimal that uh, a customer expectations sort out of their financial service providers are changing so in a sense they are looking at instant gratification like they would do when they purchase on amazon or they uh, uh, uh access spotify for example uh, uh if i may ask you varun how do you leverage all the data and insights of users who transact on paytm or uh, do you think more can be done for example can one offer more personalized advice based on trading patterns based on uh, one's own personal situation suppose for example you see someone has lost his job does he suddenly need to change his risk profile does he suddenly need to change his asset allocation strategy um you know interesting question on data i think there are two views right um one is a view that vijay and me share uh, and paytm board shares and paytm shares which is to say hey customers data is super sacrosanct to the consumer uh you know um i think the consumer owes it to us and we owe it to the consumer to respect that sacrosanctness right of of saying hey look your data is your data common data is common data and my data is my data i think and, and that's very tough to draw right especially in the brokerage business because the minute i start to guess what's vimal's risk appetite for example um and maybe i don't have the full picture right because unlike credit bureaus which exist in india wealth bureaus don't right so you what you don't have is a one shot view of women like actually 99% of indians don't know what's their wealth right like nobody can define it on a piece of paper and, and yes. that's a big problem to solve right and that's why data kicks in but point one i think is respecting the data privacy because if you don't then you end up i think kind of crossing a boundary which at paytm we never want to do right and i think that's point number one i think point number two is how do you then innovate right and how is data useful because tremendous amount of data is getting generated so let me give you an example uh we decided very early that paytm's strength or paytm money strength to is platform right we are an algee provider we are great at marketing and distribution capital market advice is not our expertise today can i buy it sure can i hire for it sure but there is a learning right 20 years of learning what to do in a crisis we are in between this massive crisis and you know we can understand how important capital market expertise is so we decided hey we are a platform we can get people together but what we can't do is start giving advice right but there are experts outside who don't have what we have which is access to millions of people platform technology so what we started to do was to set up an advisory marketplace right the first company that went off the block is a company called wealth basket uh, essentially uh, you know they they basically go to advisors advisors advise on baskets uh those are consumers then if they want on an opt in basis 
as compared to me giving my data to a third party. So we don't do that. So we say, if the consumer wants to opt in, go pay for the package, then he can go and get advisory business, right? So he can buy a basket. But for that, he has to agree to pay. And then the SEBI RIA regulations, which is the advisory regulations kick in, which I think is very important. On the other side, we partnered with a company called Investor AI. So they are an Indian startup based out of London and they work in Europe and in India. Uh, what they do is they analyze, just to give you a sense, 8 million signals a day, uh, right? In two and a half minutes for all the stocks in India, right? And that's a lot, right? And basis that they produce six or seven recommendations every day. What we do delivered through seamless technology in less than a second into the consumer's intelligent chat messenger on Paytm money. So just imagine what's happening. There's a company which is looking at all stocks in India, all studies and recommending you five. You don't anymore have to do anything but go to your app. There's a chat box, almost like WhatsApp chat, if you may. You click and you buy. That's it. So it's a one-click journey, which is enabled by data, by technology, by a bunch of things together, where I bring in this company, which I think understands data sciences and capital markets better. But I let the consumer have the choice because he has a marketplace now. He can say, yeah, I don't like this offer. I like the other advisor and so on. So I think that's what data sciences is going to evolve, where I say, hey, Consumer data is sacrosanct. That's consumer's data, not my data, right? Then the consumer has to choose who he or she decides to share it with. Then there are advisors who have their own data. I think great data puts A plus B plus C together and produces magic, right? Which is what all this blockchain decentralized world is about. So I think we're moving in the direction, but I could give you a couple of examples of what we did. And I thought that was interesting. And the last one I will give you, and uh, then we'll, I'll stop and hand, give it back to you, is uh, we launched something called Paytm Wealth Academy which is essentially learning, right? And we can maybe later talk about learning. But one of the biggest things we noticed is advisors don't have a digital platform to teach. Like a simple one, right? Where, where you know, see, when you go to YouTube, Twitter, you don't know who you're talking to. That guy might tell you buy Reliance and he's selling Reliance, right? So there is clear conflicts. But here we brought that together using tech. So essentially this advisory marketplace of ours allows you to give education, to actually give advice, to transact, to manage, all within a few clicks, right? I think that's the magic that data science is allowing us to do. But we are at the start of it, right? Like I said, all of this is 18 months old. Yeah, wonderful. I think who would have thought you can actually offer curated advisory services uh, through a, a, a completely open platform uh, in India. I think that's truly revolutionary. Uh, if I may move to you, uh, uh, Vimal, Snow, uh, Snowflake has built a data platform that aims to harness the power of the cloud. So if I look at it from a customer perspective, what makes Snowflake's uh, financial services data cloud different? Fantastic question. And Varun, fantastic insights from you. I've learned a lot as well. Uh, there's some things I was not aware of. I am aware of now. Thanks for that as well. You know, this technology enabling businesses is so gratifying to see and being used at scale as well, where you can literally through a chat bot, sit and buy five stocks, which has been given through another uh, you know, service provider through your own you know platform to your end customers. Incredible stuff. So when you talk about you know Snowflake's financial data, uh, financial services data cloud, I think from our standpoint, it all starts with a single data platform. For many many years, customers have always thought about putting data in a single you know single source of truth. But in reality, that is a very difficult challenge to you know to really overcome because many many over many years in legacy organizations or even modern organizations customers tend to build data silos. Now, those data silos really are a huge challenge for any organization because today with the Snowflake Financial Services Data Cloud, we are enabling customers to scale multiple workloads across their business. For example, it could be quantitative research or trading in the front office to even regulatory reporting. And all of this in a single source of truth without any resource contention. You can now operate this a lot more efficiently, reduce errors, meter SLAs and honestly minimize data movement or even replication by working off a single copy of data. Now, the second very, very powerful thing we've seen resonating with many financial services customers and also with a lot outside the financial services industry is all around data sharing and collaboration. Our data cloud enables customers to securely collaborate on data across the enterprise and through private data sharing or access through the data marketplace that Snowflake provides, you can, as a customer today, leverage data to meet your business critical workflows, including re regulated reporting or even performing, let's say, trade analytics or building customer 360 views. And we have many, many data providers on our data marketplace. 
The third thing is, I think Varun hit on a fantastic point on, on security and data governance. So what we're talking about, uh, I'm sorry, there's a motion detector on the back. So the lights go off in the office after some point. But when you talk about you know, unified data governance and security, it's in within our financial services data cloud, we give the highest level of security with multi-party governance controls, limited movement of data across environments, organizations can centrally control and secure data with policies. For example, we have role-based access control, row or columnar, you know, level obfuscation of data. And very importantly, data is always encrypted at rest as well as on in flight. We also bring enhanced encryption with bring your own encryption key, for example, built-in classification, anonymization of sensitive data. And we can also integrate with third-party tokenization providers, all offered in compliance with the SOC standards. And finally, we can handle any format of data at any scale because we're truly purpose-built for the public cloud so that whether you have structured, semi-structured, or even unstructured data, all of this get into a single source of truth where you can really perform the most compute in intensive analytics and customer engagements. I think these, in a nutshell, would be some very, very key differentiators of the Snowflake Financial Services Data Cloud. Uh, Varun, uh, just taking on from what uh, Vimal mentioned, thanks Vimal for the wonderful insights. Uh, uh, you talked about the fact that customer data privacy is extremely critical and there has to be a strong governance around the same. Uh, so how do you make sure that uh, 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 even internally, uh, there is no challenge in terms of uh, customer data privacy while you continue to leverage the power of technology? Yeah, no, I, I, just before answering your question, uh, I think, you know, Vimal said single source of data. I'm very happy. I'm going to chat with him later. Uh, but but I think, you know, um, in especially in capital markets, because all of a sudden, uh, India has boomed, right? Everybody, I think, last two years, essentially, a lot of people have realized, hey, why I shouldn't do fixed deposit savings accounts and all of that, right? All of a sudden, 60% of India's wealth is in fixed deposits. I think another 20, 30 in real estate. The minute all that starts moving into our capital markets, India will grow, which I think is important. Right, because capital markets are the most efficient way of capital allocation. Uh, and, and I think it will happen. And the biggest problem, you know, if there's one single problem we need to solve as a country, I think it's data, right? Because if you don't have that whole data in a single source of truth, uh, and it gets updated millions of times uh, every day, uh, it's not gonna go forward. So I think what, uh, you know, women mentioned, I think uh, kudos to their mission, because if they get it right in the next 10 years, uh, you know, uh, India would have solved what I would think you know, other than lending, which I think is a big problem in India. I must also add the data with government departments also. Yeah, I yeah, think no, we have solved that challenge. Many, many customers love to talk to you. Yeah, no, because I, I think it's a capital market ecosystem, Ajay. Right? It's not, see, if I solve it, there's no point. I, I can tell you, Paytm is already, you know, whatever grade, uh, you know, I'll let women assess us, but, you know, we are, we, we'll be right at the top, but it's not true of India, right? And all the institutions. But anyway, so Ajay, you're, you're asking a question around, um, you know, how, how would data privacy be? What's our governance standards? I think first up is uh, it's important, right? Recognition at the board level, writing down policies for it, encryption, all the normal things that anybody else would do is important, right? And I think more often than not, then make sure that you're tested for black days, right? Bad scenarios. Uh, whatever you do at the end, I think there is a scenario where there are unauthorized access could happen. Uh, we've not had it uh, till today. We have our security systems properly made. But if it does happen, uh, then how do you make sure consumer wealth is safe, consumer passwords are safe? You really can't get anything more than basic information. So I think that's pillar two. And I think pillar three is to educate consumers. Most of us are very internal oriented. I think you have to continuously work on a country of billion people who are opening their first EMAT account. I think the last point which you made is very critical. Uh, for most of them, this is the first venture into the capital markets. And it's very important from an experience perspective, they come out uh, very well satisfied. Uh, uh, Vibal, if I may quickly ask you, and I, uh, I'm aware that we are running short of time, but could you just outline some of the customer pain points or challenges you have come across that you have helped resolve? Absolutely. Uh, you know, Great question. A lot of customers, financial services customers in particular, have faced, like Varun was mentioning, the single source of truth. We have customers who really struggled with data silos for many, many years. We have some of the largest banks on the planet who are already customers of Snowflake, likes of Capital One Bank, for example, where it's a very large user of Snowflake. 
We also have many customers in both the Southeast Asia, India region, Australia, New Zealand, whether it's FinTech, InsureTech. The whole, the, one of the biggest challenge customers face is concurrency as well. As you start seeing a lot of data getting into a single source of truth within Snowflake as a platform, and you start democratizing data to everybody within the organization to make data-driven decisions, the, the load that you see on the system is very, very high. Suddenly you go from, let's say 20 concurrent users to as high as 200, 300, even a thousand concurrent users. Systems today are not really designed to take uh, advantage of this kind of you know, load on the system. Snowflake really with no resource contention, you can have literally unlimited number of users concurrently acting on that single source of truth to ensure you, you making decisions based on data. Then you're looking at how easy is it for me to have all kinds of data in a, in a single source of truth or a single single pane of glass, whether it's structured, semi-structured or, or unstructured data today as well. So that's a huge challenge we've helped customers solve. Then you're looking at how do I now work with, for example, multiple different workloads on a single platform. We started out with a data warehouse on the cloud. We obviously have data lake. We can do semi-structured data. We also, you know, a lot of customers are building innovative data applications on top of Snowflake. But one of the most powerful things we've seen customers do is, is data sharing. Data sharing sounds easy, but it's actually very, very difficult. You should now be able to share data from what you generate in your organization, both within different views in your own in your own company, or potentially even with your suppliers or partners. We've seen customers really take advantage of this particular feature from Snowflake to really transform their business. And finally, when you talk about third-party data on our data marketplace, with you know over a thousand data pro data sets available in Snowflake today, you can now combine your first, second-party, and now even third-party data to really create a rich ecosystem of internal second party and third party analytics, which really can transform your business with data-driven decisions. So we've seen that across, whether it's banking, insurance, uh, FinTech, InsureTech, what have you. Uh, thank you, Vimal. Uh, I think the, uh, you truly are working towards making sure that data is the new oil. Uh, uh, thank you, Vimal and Varun, for your time. Uh, and I hope our audience uh, enjoys uh, enjoy the discussion. Uh, thanks and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ajay. Thanks, Varun. Thank you. Those were great insights shared by Vimal Venkatram, Managing Director, India at Snowflake, and Varun Sridhar, Chief Executive Officer, Paytm Money, on the subject towards revolutionizing the wealth management ecosystem. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for taking time off from your very busy schedule and joining us at this track of the uh, summit. Thank you, Ajay Srinivasan, for doing a fantastic job of moderating this fireside chat. Uh, just a reminder, as mentioned earlier, do visit our partner booths and you can engage with our partners. You can chat and video call any of them. Do visit the photo booth where you can take a selfie and do leave your comments on the Twitter wall using the hashtag ET Digital Banking and you stand to get an Amazon voucher. Ladies and gentlemen, do stay tuned in. We will be back on the other side with a very interesting panel discussion.